I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, peoples? How you doing? Okay, it is a great day. And I have a great guest back on the show today. Miss Alice Parker is back with us. Woo! And I am so happy to have her back. We have her book. She's got it right next to her, as a matter of fact. I mean, she's got this book, man. And let me tell you, she's had this life that, yep, yep, that's it right there. Choices, changes, and friends. Life after the seventies of divorce. Let me tell you something. She's got these, these, these. I mean, I mean, she's just. I mean, how do I say this? The woman is adventurous. Ah. Okay. She's adventurous. She's done things that only people like you and I have thought, but we didn't do it. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have always said, and I taught my son, never boring. A creative mind is never bored. That's and you right. always try something new. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So, we need to go a little bit deeper into the book. We're not going to give the whole thing away, but I think we've, we've kind of <laughs> spiked some interest because people are saying stuff. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that woman is like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, let's talk about your life and the book and how, you know, you wrote that book according to your life, which I mean, was just, just amazing, by the way, okay? Well, I, I want to say it was because the four of us had joined together to get our divorces about the same time and to support each other. Because as I said, we got zero support from mm-hmm. anyone else. I remember that. And, I, and, I, and what came into the realization and the need for us to write this down was that we were each being approached by other women who were asking us almost secretively, how did you do it? How did you get a divorce? And and how do you go about this? And what should I do? And how are you surviving? And everything like that. And we did try to make it very clear. It's not the answer. I mean, divorce is like the first big step, but nothing is ever the answer. We are always in a process of growing, changing all of the steps that we have to do and take. Right. And with that, the whole idea of, you know, helping them to understand and at the same time, really living a life we had never ever been allowed to live because we all came from very controlling parents. That was the thing back then. And as I said, the wild 70s going on, alcohol, sex, drugs, rock and roll, we wanted some adventure in our life. But more than anything, we wanted to make some of our own choices, our own decisions. The idea of actual freedom and independence was a growth process. Okay, that never came up at the beginning because it would be too overwhelming, the whole idea. And that, and and who do you think you are? You're going to be independent, you know, like you've got money or something. (laughs) We were suburbanite housewives. And it was moving past that. And the whole idea that we could always probably, well, why don't we try it? (laughs) Try it. We might like it. (laughs) You know, or, and, and as I said, a lot of times alcohol was involved, you know, and sometimes purposely (laughs) because probably wouldn't have, as I mentioned the last time about propositioning the, the movie star. I mean, who would do something like that? A housewife when you're sober, you know, you have to like, why not? And, and of course, we never expected him to say yes. But, and then you deal with that. It's like, oh my God, what did we just do? You know, uh, but so many of those things, as far as getting ourselves in situations that why not, you know, and then learning how to deal with it. And I have to honestly say, Alice, or as my character, Beth, had a tendency because I was really overreacting, the kid in the candy store and all of that kind of thing, of drinking too much from time to time and having a mouth that didn't quit. (laughs) And and it could be as far as 
just if I, I say a, a man who was, I don't know, in some way maybe questioning me or something, I had developed a tongue that could slice and dice <laughs> with other things fit in between. And they just look at me and say, that wasn't a compliment. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no shit, snake. Hello, <laughs> you know, you're just catching it. And, and that whole kind of a thing, because at the beginning, of course, I mean, why we never got involved with the women's movement or anything, because they were so anti-men, we really liked men. We just didn't like the ones we had been married to. And so it was finding those new ones and you have to try them out to see how it does work. Oh, and gosh. <laughs> and, and so, and, and that was part of the whole thing. I was coming in at 20 years old, getting married and a virgin. And I had no idea because the man I married eight years older, I, and he'd been engaged twice before. And I thought, oh, good. <laughs> he's going to know what he's doing, you know, and this will be, well, he didn't. And then his mother began controlling him and convinced him that having sex with me, he would be giving up his power. And, and so it just went, you know, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm just coming into my sexuality and I have other men who are noticing me and paying attention, but he doesn't, you know, and it was when we were, and I mentioned we had worked at oh the, the first fresh, French restaurant in the suburbs. So we had a really high clientele, most of them from Chicago. And, and at the same time, it was sort of, you know, these little French uniforms and, you know, all of the, the stuff with the boobies and, and short skirt and the frillies and all of that. And it was, there was no such a thing as sexual harassment as a statement. Right. It was simply, you could say, a way of life. Put mm -hmm. up with it. Don't you have a sense of humor, you know? And, but at the same time, it was sometimes you did meet some interesting people. And especially since uh, the owner of the, uh, the restaurant, as I had said, he was, he would invite the, the bears or the, the uh, black hawks whenever they were in town on, on their Sundays to come in and a big treat for dinner. And the two of us, Connie and I were always chosen to be their server because we were the most shapely. And of course we would put up with a lot of it, you know, but it did give us a chance to, shall I say, build a repertoire. <laughs> and, and with that, not only verbally, but of course, you know, in other ways. And, and then having um, a dance bar that was at the far end of the parking lot. It was, you know, we would take customers over there all the time or meet men there all the time. And the music, as I said before, was so, so very important to us. And having that time of really freedom in dancing and just going for it. And of course, you know, and great friends with all the bartenders, we usually drank free. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, so it would be those kind of things. It was just like the the night that um, Connie got all upset at the owner of the bar because he had uh, he had told some people that we came and we just practically drinking out of all of his booze. You might as well put a straw in a, a, a bottle and give it to us. And she was just, she was really ticked because we'd never really caused scenes. Well, not big scenes, you know, I mean, okay. scenes, big scenes, you know, <laughs> but so she, she said, we're going to get back at him. So she'd set up with one of our favorite bartenders, you know, bottle of scotch. She had taught me to drink scotch. I had to get off the vodka because I was bad enough on the scotch, but on the vodka, I was really, you know, um, <laughs> and some of those stories, it's like, wow. Okay. Anyway, so we were going to, it was Sunday night, which was ladies night. 
which always brought out more men. And they always had a live band. So, woo, you know, and we decided we were going to drink a quart of scotch in two hours. A quart of scotch. Yes. Yes. Getting now this was supposed to be, I mean, yeah, yeah, this is how hmm, not, you know, we're getting back at the owner by drinking a quart of scotch. Oh yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Good idea. Right. Okay. (laughs) So anyway, we're going along and the word is going down and everybody coming up and watching us and we're going through it and I'm good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm doing good. Well, we did make the mistake of getting up to dance (laughs) because as I said, music and dancing were, mm -hmm, and of course the guys asking us were not too bad. Uh, And so we're getting up and we're dancing and dancing come back and starting and of course the whole thought about the alcohol is moving faster through the blood now had nothing to do with this you know okay so we're doing okay for a while how are you doing well (laughs) okay I come back from one dance and she had said to me now listen get yourself together (laughs) I don't want us to make fools out of yourself I start laughing oh no and I forget there is no back on the stool and the la- next thing she knew I'm on the floor oh no <laughs> and I fall like straight down so I'm straddling the stool oh perfect ladylike I mean oh perfect gosh. oh my gosh so wait wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Miss Parker hold on a second <laughs> I can't even do what I was supposed to do. Guys, we'll be right back with Miss Alice Parker. Oh, oh my gosh. After this break. <laughs> <laughs> can't. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. We got to be quiet. Hold on. I need to so put a break. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Welcome back to the show. Okay. I need like handkerchiefs. <laughs> Miss uh, Parker, go. Just go. Just we're back with Miss Ash Parker. Okay. So three guys help me back up on the stool, and I'm like, oh, oh, thank you. You know, and I, it's like, oh, can we help you all? You know. Anyway, we finished the bottle. We had a roll of quarters for the bartender because they like to play the games. So that was kind of our thing for them and everything. And the the owner came over and profusely apologizing. I will never ever say, you know, and we're like, "Mm, whatever. So I was too wasted, but of course, Connie was only half wasted. So decided she would drive my car home. So, okay, so we do that. My house is the closest to the restaurant. So, and we're going, you know, <laughs> curb to oh, curb. Oh, no. Yeah, but we get in the driveway, okay. And then it it's like four concrete steps up to my old little cottage style house, you know, to the little porch. And, and, we're, and we're laughing, just, we cannot stop laughing and everything. So I'm digging in my purse, trying to get my key. Now, inside the house is my little miniature poodle who was going absolutely ape shit because somebody's invading the house, you know, and that certainly doesn't seem like me. And then she has to start with her own jokes. What's wrong? You can't find here. Let me help you find it. So she starts digging in my out, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I finally get the key and then I'm trying to get in in the door. And then she starts on with one joke. Ha ha ha. I already said you couldn't find the hole. Ha ha. You know, and going on and on. And, and I'm really, you know, so, okay, fine. You do it. So I step to the side. Now, my little porch only has front railings. It didn't have any on the side. So I'm standing on the side and now she's trying to get the key in the door and she can't do it. So I'm laughing and I'm laughing and I'm not realizing I'm stepping back. 
I fall back into the bushes, okay? Spread eagle, my purse, which was still open, flings all over the bushes and right down. And then she realizes and turns and goes, oh my God, she runs to, <laughs> to the <laughs> edge of the porch. Are you dead? Talk to me. Are you alive? Uh, what's going on? What's happening? Yeah, yeah. And this <laughs> goes up and falls right <laughs> on top of me. And I, well, if I wasn't, I am now. You know. <laughs> and about this time, my very nice older lady neighbor next door oh, no. comes on, and I think, oh. My Keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. Now, she manages to crawl back up on the porch. I am getting out of my coat, which I leave there, and start climbing around. My pantyhose get tangled in the bushes. And so they're gone. And I'm crawling around and coming back up the stairs. And I get up the stairs. She still doesn't have the door open, but the key is in. We have bumped into the mailbox holder several times. So now it's kind of all cockeyed to the side and we're still laughing hysterically. I fall into her, she falls into the door and it pops open. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. And my poor dog is going nuts over both of us. And uh, being a typical drunk, I mean, how they would act, I know how to get to my bedroom. And it's sort of like Connie sort of knows the, the little bedroom where my, my son usually sleeps, but of course he's gone for that weekend. And, <laughs> and she's trying it anyway. I go and I just hit the bed and, you know, out. So in the morning. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> again. Oh no. My little dog is just barking and barking and barking and barking. And she usually would bark at the mailman, but I thought, what is he doing? What's taking so long, you know? And I managed to get out of bed. And then of course I have to go straight to the bathroom, you know, my God. And I come into the living room and it just looks like, you know, things are all, the television is off the table and, and I can see where she pulled a, a, a a cover from the one of the big couches and and she's gone into my son and she's flopped over on on the that bed and I open up the door and I'm looking and like oh my god and the mailman is just kind of looking back over his shoulder and starts walking faster you know <laughs> get away from you <laughs> and I'm just like oh my god God, the fact that he didn't call the police was kind of amazing because clothes were everywhere, including the pantyhose. And I, you know, and I'm like, oh wait my a minute. God. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, what do you mean clothes are everywhere? You mean outside the house? Outside, from when I fell, I just got up and out of my, my coat. And then, I, like I said, I got my pantyhose all caught in the bushes and that was still kind of you know hanging there and you know coming up I obviously had been taking off more of the clothes because I just wanted to get in into you know in the bed and and I'm laughing hysterically so I go in I wake up Connie and of course she's half dead and I no 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 you got to come you got to come look at this because otherwise you'll think that I I set it up or something. You got to see what we did last night. So she drags herself out and she's wrapped herself around the throat cover. <clears throat> and, um, and I've got on a, a, a bathrobe I'd thrown on and we go out and she was like, Oh my God. And looking at this unbelievable mess out there. And I'd looked over the side and of course, contents of my purse and everything was scattered everywhere and all that. So uh, we sit down and we're laughing hysterically. And she said then, well, I guess if the police were going to come, they would have been here and maybe you, we ought to go inside before the men in the white coats come because oh that's what <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. So, 
Anyway, that was one of those that was talked about forever and ever and ever. And the most uh, amazing thing, though, was, you know, looked around my little car and, uh, and it was okay. There nothing. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that we get through that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So, Ms. Parker, is this story in the book as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As well as, okay, I know, I know we don't have time to do all the stories, but this is a thick <laughs> book. I mean, pull that book up again. Show people how thick this book is. Oh, it's 600 pages. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, Turn it 80, sideways. Yeah. 80% <laughs> of the book is on the 70s into the early 80s. So it really does deal with those beginning years. And then I take it because after that, you know, we've started growing and changing and really kind of making decisions about what we want to do, careers, and for me, of course, and they had gone back to school to take uh, college classes and stuff, uh, but I was really, really determined to get my degree, you know, finished and, and everything with what I wanted to do. So 80% is all of the, you know, <laughs> things that happen, and and I probably said before, but I'll say now, just about anything that could happen between four women. I mean, you know, when you've got four different women, all those things in life that do happen, they happen for us. I mean, you know, from the good, the bad, and in between type of situations. And even after I left, um, which was at five years after the divorce, when I was, I knew I had to physically move, not only to get away from my mother, who was still driving me crazy, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also to get away from the drinking and to get away from our, well, why don't we do that? Why don't we, you know, just kind of I knew I need, it was the only way I was going to be able to more focus on my career and what I wanted to do, even though that was still kind of nebulous as far as what do you really want to be when you grow up, little girl, you know? Right. Wow. So, but, uh, so there's, there's a lot of those crazies. Um, it's, it's kind of, and how, you know, building and getting stronger. And as I said, when we hit that point of really understanding the importance of freedom of independence and we could do this you know we could do this mm -hmm. it was something that you know and it didn't mean we had to be rich and famous or anything like that but we were also looking at those other women and constantly trying to remind them hey you don't have to put up with that crapola you know, and that whole idea, no, it's not easy, but it's worth it. Right. And that's, that's the whole point. And I think, you know, too, Yaya, there's still so many women, particularly who do not understand their worth. Right. And whether they've been put down from, uh, you know, the parental thing or whether it was the husband or, or what the situation was. And just like I was talking last time about a woman deserves, you know, to have a good sexual relationship. I was going to talk about that for a second yeah. because, you know, yeah. I mean, that's kind of taboo. A lot of people don't talk about that, but you, you are a very open book. Literally you wrote a book yeah. and people can open it. I mean, yeah. and it's like, I mean, you said you were married very young and yes. then his mom kind of interfered with <laughs> your marriage. And I then said that, uh, his umbilical cord was still fully attached. Oh my that... gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so after that, I mean, and even today, let's, let's talk about today. Let's talk about today yeah. because, you know, we, I think we touched on this last time, even, I don't know if we were on camera or not, but we talked about being older and still yeah. having a sex drive. I mean, we're not dead yet. We're no, not dead no, yet. no, not at all. Not what at do all. you say about that? I mean, I know it's taboo, but <laughs> Miss Alice Parker, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put you out there. I'm going to say yeah. that you are my sex guru right now. 
<laughs> and and I think that that's why I want to talk about it because it should not be taboo because a woman has a right. And that's a right not only to say no, but a right to say, you know, could we try ba 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 ba, you know, or uh, I would really like you to do, you know. And this is where not only getting a man who is open, but if he can't think of it himself or he doesn't have that kind of experience, unfortunately, even the older ones, you know, you mm -hmm. think that they'd know by now. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's like, I mean, uh, you know, we can thank Oprah for bringing out the whole talk on orgasm. Hello. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, and because it was almost like a dirty word. Yeah, and, I know. You know, I and mean, orgasm has always specifically been more referred to for a woman, where climax would be more for a man or something like that, you know, type of a thing. But I think that's where that importance of understanding. And if you do have a problem, as far as, you know, I don't know if I, I feel comfortable or, or mother always told me that was dirty or nasty or whatever the words were, mm -hmm. you know, that there are a lot of, um, you know, psychologists who can help you as far as go back to what it was. What right. is it that is holding you back from this? And it's, it's one of the things that has cracked me up, I think, with a, a lot of the <laughs> retirement communities where, you know, there, there's usually the Romeo, you know, who any new woman who comes in who's not married or something, you know, he's, you know, and, and there has to be some awareness to that too, because as much as you might like it, if he's the village Romeo, <laughs> And you want something more than, you know, his passing time or something that has to be talked about or, or thought about. And that's where being able to open up. It was one of the things that we dealt with April way back when uh, she got married the second time way too fast. And she was only looking for roof over her head and, and to have her two girls taken care of because she wasn't like us as far as really enjoying working, having the independence of working. My money, I spend it the way I want. And, right. and uh, unfortunately she married Hitler Jr. And uh, so it was one of those situations and, and the sex was incredible the first four or five months or something like that. And then, you know, well, have you talked to him about Oh, I can't talk to him about that. You're married to him. Yeah, right. I mean, this is one of those things that I have never understood that. I don't either. If you can't talk, now you don't have to be married to the man, but if uh, somebody that you consider a relationship with, if you can't tell him, I really don't care when you do that, but I would really prefer this or, you know, those kind of things. And I mean, we had the opportunity of knowing men who didn't even want to get started if they didn't have at least an hour. And that's amazing that they would want, and, and we're not talking about 60 minutes of coitus. We're talking about like, you know, 20 minutes or more on each other exploring and enjoying the body. And if you're not comfortable with your body, get over it. Stand naked in front of a mirror. Hopefully your big one in the bathroom or full size and love your body. Because if you don't love your body, it's not going to respond when someone else is trying to love your body. And I think these are things that we learned and we shared and we tried to get across to each other. Um, it, it was kind of that situation of, again, going back to how we were raised. And if we, that control, that restriction and everything, no. No, you're a grown woman. It's your body. 
and you have the choice what you want to do with it. And you still have the opportunity to enjoy sex until, you know, <laughs> and actually knew a woman that her husband did die. <laughs> you know, she said, but wow, it was a really fantastic, <laughs> you know, uh, making love situation. So I know he went happy, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and it was kind of you know, a little bit on the cool side with that. But on the other hand, most people would say, hey, that's how I would want to go, would be after an incredible session of lovemaking. And even if it's not um, a relationship or husband or, or, or whatever kind of a thing, I think it's that whole, except the fact that God gave you the body, gave you the ability to have an orgasm, that it's sort of like, God wants you happy. And, and I think that's a whole understanding of it. And um, I have to understand, you know, one of the things I, <laughs> I enjoyed about, you know, this, the series Frankie and Grace and when they came out with their vibrator and everything like that, I have never been real big into a vibrator because I'm very, very, very sensitive. Um, I was able to develop multiple orgasms. And <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and, it, and it goes back to one of the first books that came out, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Sex and Were Afraid to Ask. Do I remember Dr. David Rubin. He said 90% of it is up here, not down there, up here. And, and it was something that I was very lucky. A couple of my lovers were, uh, especially Frank the Biker, <laughs> who would have thunk, you know? He was at, yeah. Oh, the chapters on that chapter is mind blowing. Mind Ms. Parker, Ms. Parker, we got to have you back on the show. <laughs> I think my time is up and I think I'm, I'm just a little flushed. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, think about it and, and look at it. Oh my gosh. It's, it's like, there's all kinds of things and ways to be happy. Sex, I believe, is one of them, and there's no time limit. Okay, okay. Who guys, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm sorry I didn't tell you to put the kitties away before this, but it's okay. Um, Ms. Parker, thank you so much for being here. Okay, so we're going to have all of your information, but tell everybody where they can find your book really quick, because okay. I am telling you, Ms. Parker, and, and this is the reason why I love having Ms. Parker on the show. She has no, like how they say hair on her tongue no and um yeah so no, no. <laughs> i'm just miss parker's she's okay the biker okay never mind um <laughs> oh it's it that was three of the greatest years of my life i have to okay. tell you okay okay, yeah. okay. And, and it's okay. all in the book it's all in the book okay the choices changes and friends uh 1970s after divorce of course Amazon has it. Uh, you can get it paperback, e-copy, you know, hard, whatever you want. They have that. And, um, and it, it's something that, uh, and, and I have to put the plug into my scripts are being evaluated. I should be hearing in a couple of weeks. So that would be a good time to come back about it being made into a streaming TV series. I am going to be the first one to be like sitting behind my TV with the camera over my shoulder watching it because <laughs> I'm not going to be able to resist because, and I'm going to be like one of the first people that interviewed you. Okay. I am honored and definitely oh, we're going to yeah. have to have you back on the show. We're going to have to talk about the one thing that most people don't want to talk about. Sex. Yes. Sex. And, and really uh, it's sad. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that with Miss Alice Parker. Next time we come back, don't you guys, I mean, don't you guys like, you know, hang up on this whole thing because we're not finished yet. Miss Parker is not done yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my.
my gosh. Miss yeah. Parker, thank you again so much for being on the show. And thank you guys so much for watching. And if you love this episode, please go ahead and comment and like and subscribe and go and check out that book for yourself. And then, you know, pray for this whole new series because I think it's going to be, it's yeah. going to be, a, it's going to be a hit. And okay. I'm happy to answer their questions. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Okay. All right. You heard it from her, Miss Alice Parker yourself. I am going to go ahead and go guys. And I'm going to go in and I need a fan. Okay. I got to go guys. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Until next time guys. Bye. <laughs> I did to be different I did to be different